Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's devotion. Today, I will start off by singing Fall Afresh. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Easter is about power. It's about God's power over death, over sin, over evil, and over darkness. The empty tomb is the sign of God's power. But it's not just that. Power apart from love 
power that is used for selfish ends, for self-serving ends, power that's used at the expense of others, is a dark and dangerous and destructive thing. J.R.R. Tolkien wrote the series The Lord of the Rings uh, many years ago now, back in the 1930s and 40s. And uh, it's one of my favorite sets of novels. It's been made into a series of movies as well. Maybe you've read the books or seen the movies. And it's the sprawling epic of life in this fantasy land called Middle Earth. And it's got so many characters and so many subplots. But I think one of the main themes in this epic tale is the theme of what happens when power is divorced from love. And the backstory to The Lord of the Rings is that thousands of years before the story begins, um, the Dark Lord named Sauron forged a golden ring in the fires inside of Mount, uh, Mount Mordor. And um, he then um, used that ring to create this absolute power. It gave him power over uh, the holder of any other ring. Well, uh, Sauron lost it in a battle, and for thousands of years, no one knew what happened to it. And then, quite by accident, it wound up in the hands of a hobbit, a short little fellow in the Shire, um, named Bilbo Baggins. And Bilbo eventually gave it to his nephew, Frodo, who was also a little hobbit. Well, when Gandalf, the great wizard, found out that Frodo Baggins had that the the ring he immediately knew that they had to do everything they could do to destroy it and the only way to destroy it was to um, throw it into the fire um, in the mountain where it was forged that was the only way to to get rid of it and so um, gandalf formed what was a fellowship of the ring made up of humans and hobbits and wizards and dwarfs and elves, all determined to um, destroy the ring and bring peace to Middle Earth again. And I don't have time to tell you that whole story. It's a wonderful story of how Frodo and the Fellowship of the Ring eventually succeeded in destroying the ring. But even though um, it was on its way to destruction. It still had the power to corrupt, and it had corrupted others before, and it even tempted uh, Frodo himself, and he had to struggle mightily not to let the ring, the powers of darkness, overtake him. Finally, they destroyed uh, the ring, and peace came to uh, Middle Earth. And I think that um, one of the, the themes in the book is also how power in the service of love, power used for the sake of others, is a creative thing, a beautiful thing. And that's what we see in this tale uh, in Frodo, how he was willing to do everything he could, even to uh, being willing to give up his life in order to destroy the ring and save Middle Earth. That's really what we celebrate on Easter. It's not just power, but it's power in the service of love. It is God's love um, put to work uh, through God's power. Um, Jesus, I think, can be understood in one way as absolute power in the service of absolute love. I think that we see so many things in the world today as um, sad and tragic examples of power divorced from love. And you can think of as many examples as I can of situations and stories and tragedies in which power has been used in selfish ways for self-serving ends, in a way that uh, destroys people, destroys relationships, destroys communities. And I think that it serves as a cautionary tale for us I think it tells us that the more power I have, the more I need to be filled with God's love so I can use the power I have for the sake of others and not in selfish ways for my own sake. 
Um, we have all kinds of power. Um, we have power that comes from our money, power that comes from our education, power that comes from our positions as a, as a parent, as a teacher, as a coach, uh, as a boss, as a, as a pastor, as a, as a church leader. And there's nothing wrong with power. But the question is, am I using that power in the service of God's love? Am I using it for the sake of others? And the more power that I have, the more important it is that I be open to and be filled with the love of God in Christ Jesus. That's really what we celebrate on Easter, power in the service of love, because where that happens, there is new life and new hope and new joy and new peace. And so that's what I pray for myself and for us, that we live not only in God's power, but in God's love, so that the power that God has given us, used in service of his love, can create new life, new hope, new joy, and new peace. Live in the power of love. That's what we celebrate this Easter and every day. We celebrate because Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now I'd like to lead us in prayer. Uh, we'll give you a moment for silence to center yourself and still yourself. And then I'll lead us in prayer and have us pray the Lord's Prayer together. So let us pray. Good and gracious God, uh, we give you thanks today for your victory over the power of sin and death and evil on Easter morning. More than that, though, Lord, we thank you for your great love because it is in the power of your love that Easter has come true and that we too can live in that power. And we so we pray that you grant us the grace to use the power you've given us in service of your love so that we can be agents of new life and new hope and new peace and new joy. Lord, we pray for uh, all those who are um, affected by the virus and uh, we uh, ask your blessing as we seek to bring uh, this pandemic to an end. Uh, bless all those who are sick because of the virus, especially now younger people. We pray for all the, the medical workers who have been working tirelessly for over a year now to care for those who are sick. Uh, bless the scientists who are working hard to, to bring us the vaccines we need and bless those who are charged with the responsibility of distributing them fairly and equitably. We pray, Lord, for all those who are financially uh, harmed by this uh, pandemic for the hungry and the homeless, for the underemployed and the unemployed, for those who've lost their businesses and those who are afraid they will. We pray for our nation, and especially now in light of this most recent shooting. We pray, Lord, that um, you would use us um, to put right um, what has been put wrong, to use our power in the service of love and that um, we live in a nation where there's liberty and justice, not just for the few, but for everyone. And that uh, whatever reforms need to be made will be made so everyone can live in peace and in safety. We pray for ourselves as in at light of Christ as we seek to open up um, and begin to gather in person. 
Give us the wisdom to know how to do that safely and renew and strengthen the bonds of love that we have for one another. We pray, Lord, for all those who are afflicted in any way, in body or mind or spirit, and we lift up to you now those whom we know and love who are in need of your healing touch. We pray for those who grieve this day, Lord, grieve the deaths of those they love, and especially we pray for those who grieve the deaths of those who uh, died because of COVID-19. Comfort all who grieve this day um, with the hope and the promise of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. And finally, we pray for ourselves and for all those things that uh, weigh most heavily uh, upon our minds and hearts and we lift them up to you uh, now. Lord, all, those, all these names, all these needs, all these situations, all the things that are on our minds and hearts, all the things that we ought to pray for, we gather up and give to you in the prayer that you yourself have taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Now as you go from here, may Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way, beside you to befriend you, beneath you to uphold you, behind you to defend you, above you to watch over, and within you to give you his peace. And the blessing of the Almighty and the most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us this day and always. Amen. Go now in peace. You are God's beloved. Thanks be to God.